Hi, I'm Fred Groves, and I'm here with Chris Lewis of the Progressive Conservative Party as we get ready for the June 7th election. Chris, first of all, thank you very much for running. And thank you so very much. Really, really appreciate it. I was wondering if you could give us uh, some background, your biographical background. I know you were a counselor here in Kingsville for a while. Absolutely. So I was a counselor uh, for four years right here in town. I was a firefighter, of course, for seven and a half years right here in Kingsville as well. Um, got a wonderful wife. Her name's Allison. Uh, my, literally my high school sweetheart. Uh, my children are 18, 17, and 15. Uh, all teenagers getting ready to enter the workforce. Um, of course, love them to death. Uh, worked with a family business called Liquid Force Services um, for about 25 years. And the last five years before I, before I left the family business, I literally traveled across North America uh, doing sales. But more so than that is um, finding ways to, to save municipalities huge amounts of tax dollars. So as an example, um, the company um, is across Canada now. They're in Calgary, they're in, they're in Halifax, um, literally saving taxpayers and municipalities millions of dollars every year through innovative type work. Wow. So yeah, we're all about, uh, we're all about community. Um, I'm a grassroots boy, I'm a farmer. Uh, I grew up on a farm, I had to pick stones on the family farm. My father was literally the milkman, I think as you know. Yes he was. You know, so uh, yeah, I'm a grassroots, kind of a simple guy. Um, but but very much uh, all about community and service. Great. What skills do you think that you've, that you've learned maybe on the family farm and, and in your community that you can transfer to becoming uh, an MPP? Absolutely. That's a great question. I think the biggest, the biggest skills that uh, anybody uh, aspiring to be an MPP is they must be humble and they must be great listeners. I think those are the two biggest, uh, biggest skill sets that makes a great MPP. Um, but of course, Notwithstanding that they have to be able to stand up and, and fight for the people. Um, my business background um, taught me fiscal responsibility, of course. Uh, my fire department background really taught me about service, um, teamwork, of course, with community. Um, and of course, my, my council background, well, that, that just tells me how um, desperately municipalities need help. They're struggling. Every single tax dollar is being stretched to the very limits. Yes, it is. How do we help them more and more? So, How's the campaign going so far? What have you, when you're going door to door, what are some of the people saying to you? Um, people are ready for change. They are literally ready for change. And they don't even know why they're so upset. It's, and I, let's face it, we know why. It's been 15 years of, of liberal mismanagement, yeah. high debt and high tax. But, but they realize that they don't want to go that far left. They're realizing that there's, there's huge debt, debt in this province, $311 billion worth of debt. And I guess maybe, Consciously or subconsciously, they realize that we have a long road to hope and we need some fiscal uh, responsibility. So, I mean, those those are the things for sure. But getting down to high tax, uh, high taxes, high gas prices, high hydro prices, those resonate right across the county. Um, it's a very consistent message. What do you think is um, you know looking at Essex County? I know you mentioned a couple of things to me before when we spoke. What do you think the biggest issue here for us in Essex County is? The biggest issue is helping families across the board. That's that's hands down, and that's done in so many ways. But I think the biggest uh, budget issue right here for Essex County that's been neglected for quite some time now is Highway 3. Um, because I was a fireman for so long, and I realize that Highway 3 doesn't touch all portions of the county, but I'm just talking about a, a large budget issue. But really not that large of a budget, budget issue. Um, you're talking about somewhere in the neighborhood of 40 to $50 million. Um, very tragic, again last week. Yes, I, I that as a fireman, yeah, yeah. I, I responded to literally dozens and dozens of accidents right on that highway. Some people I knew very dearly. Yeah. Um, my son travels that highway every single day to go to school, not every day, Monday to Friday to go to school every day. Um, this is personal to me, very, very personal to me. And of course, me, hometown of Kingsville, it's the lifeline. It's yeah. a lifeline right up the, uh, through, the, through the heart of this county, and it's a clogged ar artery. And I was so incredibly proud when Doug Ford came out um, at our rally here and made the commitment to to get this this highway widened not in future years immediately no. and he told me right at the rally Chris the moment that I'm elected and you're elected you call me you call me and tell me and remind me we're gonna put a shovel in the ground right away Wow what uh, you know segueing on that what do you think is the biggest provincial provincial issue is it is it is it health care I'm hearing a lot about health care health care is huge as a matter of fact um, just, just coming from a meeting now with the local hospital uh, I won't say who it was with but with a local hospital meeting with directors and CEOs um, I, w what I'm told is the majority of hospitals are running deficits year after year after year deficits 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 and to battle those deficits they're literally laying off our frontline workers 
It's yeah. layering off our, our healthcare workers. Yep, a lot of nurses. Incredibly struggling to me. And, and basically what the individual told me was, I have no choice, Chris. I either lay off workers or I run a larger deficit. And that is trouble to me like no tomorrow. You know, so, so Doug Ford saying 15,000 new long-term care beds in over five years, 30,000 30, over 10 years, $1.9 billion investment in mental health. When I explained those types of things uh, to the individual, she was very happy. And of course, along with those come good paying jobs. So why progressive conservative? It's your first go around at the provincial nomination process. Why did you pick progressive conservative? Well, I've been a conservative my whole life, of course. But I'm, I'm very open-minded. Um, I guess because I've seen, I've seen 15 years of liberal mismanagement. Um, we are $311 billion in debt. And although they want to bury their heads in the sand and think it's just gonna go away and it's all, it's all roses, well, it's not. Um, I'm a father, again, of three, and I'm worrying about the next generation. I'm worried about our young adults. When I look at the NDP, NDP platform, and after just coming from that hospital uh, meeting, you know, they're, they're suggesting to introduce um, up to a million uh, people as a sanctuary province. Wow. We cannot afford that. No. This, this Ontario cannot afford to be a sanctuary province. No, We'd love to help people, but you've got to take care of, the, of, of home first. That's right. Um, progressive Conservative, it's really simple for me, honestly. Um, the other two parties, the NDP and Liberals, they speak nonsense. The Conservatives speak, speak common sense. And uh, I'm a common sense kind of a guy. If it, if it makes sense, we do it, but we can't just give the ship away time and time again and wonder who's going to pay for it. So the last question I want to ask you before we wrap up here, Chris, is um, why should I vote for you? I guess because... Why should, sorry, why should I vote for Chris Lewis? Absolutely. Fair enough. I guess because I, I don't really come with any baggage. Um, I haven't had a turn for, for two terms at Queen's Park to get things done. I guess because, um, because I'm a really humble man. I'm a person that, that strongly, strongly believes in, in community. Um, I am a, I'm an individual that, that seriously cares about our future. Wow. Seriously cares about our future. This whole, my, when I started this whole campaign, it was about our young adults. And how do we leave the world a better place than we found it? That's right. And that's what I was told a long time ago from my father, and that's what I intend to do. Good. Thank you, Chris. Thank you okay. so much. June 7th, don't forget to vote uh, whatever candidate you think, but please, please, Vote. Please Thank do. you very much. Thanks so very much. Appreciate Thanks. it. Thank, Thank you, you again.